Hi everybody, I'm Patrick from Patrick Boards and I would like to introduce you to our slalom shapes. To develop a slalom board is not always easy because some riders they request more top speed, some other riders who are already really fast they would like to have a better jibing, but at the end of the day we still believe that a slalom board has to do everything. Very important is also the acceleration right off the start. You have eight guys, they're all playing around and um, if you're a bit too early at the line you have to stall a little bit to not go over early and there's a moment where you just have to sheet in and if the board is just super fast but has no acceleration you're just gonna stuck you're just gonna stay stuck behind everyone in the turbulence of the cells and even if you have the fastest board in the world you cannot overtake the guys anymore so um, we need to have it all um, definitely the early planning it is combined with the rocker line and the cutouts so if the cutout is just too big and the, the surface in the tail is too small the, the board is kind of stalling and and and, and to accelerate you, you need to board to do that rather so a bigger fin helps you can push against the tail and the tail comes up a little bit and rail starts to rail over the fin but still if, if the cutouts are too big you push the tail, the tail sinks and, and you, you cannot even accelerate. Once you're at top speed, big cutouts, really nice, super, like uh, super, super fast, everything. But again, when you come to the buoy where you have to jibe, if you cut away all the surface around in the tail, it just makes the jibing so unstable. And depending on the situation where you are, there are some other guys around, you want to go through your line and you can't because either there's the tail is wiggling around, there's a chop, you're spinning out or there's something. And then when you crash, you simply lost. So how big does a cutout really have to be? Well, it's a hard question, but um, at the end of the day, the cutout has to harmonize, has to be, has to be balanced with the whole shape of the board. So the rock line we have, it's depending a little bit on the size of the board. Is, um, the smaller boards have um, a little different rocker line than the big boards. The big boards are also a bit shorter. And the smaller boards have a little bit of longer flat, so the board is a bit more stable. And the bigger boards, they have the shorter flat where you can really play while having to push with the back foot. You let the board fly through the lull or you push a little bit more on the front foot when you need a bit more control. The front area of the board of all the sizes are the same. So we have a double concave with quite a lot of V and some side flat. The double concave just helps a lot when you, when you hit the chop. In slalom sailing, sometimes there's really some rough chop, even some waves. And when you come full speed, 60, 70 Ks an hour, and you hit that chop and it's not absorbing anything, if you if you take off and you're in the air, you just lose a lot of speed. So you always have to try to stay on the water, never ever jump. So the double concave in the front is really absorbing the chop. And um, in the back area on the small sizes, we have a, a flat panel V. The flat panel V makes the board really controllable, easy to jibe, and the water release is just very smooth. The bigger sizes, we have an invert V, which is, let's say you can compare it like with a monoconcave. It's just the monoconcave is hard to control in production. When you have like a monoconcave, everything is round. So the, the, the workers in production, they're having a hard time to make it really symmetric. You can have a monoconcave, which is, it's deeper on that side and flatter on the other side or the other way around. While an invert V is basically two flats going running into the center so the only thing you have to measure is the center line if it's flat from here to here and then you put the straight edge across and you measure how deep it is and that shows you already that the invert v is correct so that's a very very simple way to have kind of a single concave in the tail but easy to measure for the boards in productions the slalom shape we also have an S-deck shape, which I call. So basically your back foot is quite high 
it's actually the same level as your front foot and right in front of your front foot the shape goes down a little bit to have the mass track a little bit lower to gain a little bit of control and also to reduce the weight in the front in some cases you can say if the board is too thin in the front you get thin rails but um, we managed actually to have a very very boxy rail in the front so when you crank your your jibes the nose is not sinking or cutting through something and just goes straight it's always floating so that the really junky rails in the front are floating you can push as hard as you want they're not digging in so they float so you never have to be scared to crash while in the tail the outline and the cutouts play a big role when you go jiving. You see our cutouts, the line is still a very, very smooth line. In, in some cases the cutout could be like radical and then just from example from this edge here be cut straight down, but then you have like a kink. And as it sounds it probably feels, so if there is a kink when you jibe you feel probably like a kink, it's just not smooth. If something is like really smooth and round, it jibes smooth and round. The other thing is also with the cutouts, if you have like a kink and you go full speed, there is the moment where you kind of, you push the tail a bit too much and, and the, the outline on the leeward side is rolling over that kink. When you have a gradual, like a, like a smooth round curve, you can play with it. You say, I want to put a bit more, push a bit more, you want to let it fly a bit more, or the other way around, you want to push it down a little bit. To gain more control. All our slalom boards also have a double insert in the front to be able to change the foot strap positions for those who have a little bit of an error foot. Also you can have the you have the the outside the rail side of the strap a bit more inboard or a bit more outboard. Our biggest sizes on the slalom board have a foil box. We believe um, some windsurfers they do not like to buy a separate foil board and it's always good to have the slalom boards also be able to use with a foil. I hope you like our slalom boards. It's definitely a really really good combination between early planing, acceleration, top speed and jiving.